Alright, what's up YouTube? I'm about to make this video a bit more monologue-ish, more of an anecdote video of my research on anti-statism and state. I really want to mention something that's really specific. Now, in making arguments against the state, usually people call the state something that's inconvenient and will eventually lead to problems in the long term. But they don't mention any short term complications, anything that actually makes the state totally inconvenient. That's what I'm looking for. Like socialism's calculation problem. I'm trying to look for the state's ultimate problem that makes it impossible to do one essential thing. And then searching for that, I was looking through a lot of Greek writers, since or Roman writers. Those are usually play writers, not philosophers or sophists they, they were actually sophists people who teach philosophy and aren't just fetishes of philosophy they're sophists and so I was accustomed to this guy named Diogenes Diogenes was the first cynic philosopher and a lot of what he did was that he defaced a lot of government and thing about this guy is that he's the first in my opinion crappy anti-statist the people of Taoist or Taoist beliefs and religion are first good anti-statist and that's not by much what he advocated was that there were states but that people would be cosmopolitan Cosmopolitan means that they would have pride for being citizens of the world. That means that uh, there's just the world. It's not nationalities. There's no sort of emphasis on ethnic beliefs or things like that. And there would sort of be this no patriotism, no love of the state or nations. <laughs> not me, it's country. So if I'm from the United States, I'm not a patriot of the United States. I'm a lover and a pursues proud of being a person of the world. And as I was reading this, well, not reading it, as I was looking these things up, since this guy's writings are dead. They're dead, man, basically. There's very little left of his history and traces. I thought, wow, man. I began to think. What if there was what he advocated a cosmopolitan system of the world actually existed? That the United States, Canada, Mexico, Argentina, Continents outside, countries outside of continents, all the basic countries were under this one world government system, which is what he advocated. This world government would try and probably have a constitution like ours, which grants its power to give so many different amendments and an unlimited amount of power. What kind of laws would this advocate? And I'm not trying to sound like a conspiracy theorist because, as I said, those guys are usually minarchists. I don't try to sound like a conspiracy theorist because I like to advocate what the state does right in front of you. The problem with this is that we have these little things now that try to do a cosmopolitan government. going on in my hood. It's probably gonna screw us over. What kind of laws would they try to advocate? 
Well, they would try to advocate laws that would try to integrate everyone, every country. As opposed to me, where I want no country or no state, but if I say no country, I might pass off as a racist or a misanthropy. Now, let's think about some laws that people might around the world fight because of these. Our world government would probably try to force every country to be a democracy, and that's gonna suck, but. That's what they'll probably try to do. So everyone's gonna end up in a demo democratic state. What kind of democratic state? It doesn't matter. What else? What else? All right, just gonna try to ratify, try to get rid of slavery from every country, since slavery still exists in some places. Oh, even places where it's illegal, you could end up dealing with slavery. What else? What else? What else? And then you have to deal with... What else are you trying to spread besides... Uh, well, they could try to spread crony capitalism. So, everyone could either be a crony capitalist nation or... Uh, Socialist one. And these are my little theories, and they're not that good. But when I think about these things, that's what I sort of think about. Think about what would happen. If these people actually created a world government system that every country would have to fall through with. And the reason I would think that Diogenes probably thought this was a good thing was because he thought this would end wars. Now, unifying everyone, forcing everyone to integrate, was the way to create peace. And forced integration, in my opinion, is worse than forced segregation. Both are horrid things. Yet one is the worst of two evils, the higher of two evils. And I know I sound like a total stoner right now, just, this one's a little bit different because I'm looking off in the side, I'm paying no attention to looking at that ugly ass camera, but I'm really comfortable right now, that's why I'm doing it. And I thought about it. And how could this be juxtaposed into one of the reasons why statism is not just inconvenient and will eventually lead to problems that a stateless society won't have to deal with? Because if it was just me saying that the state's inconvenient and the stateless society is more convenient, and that the state will eventually have problems that a stateless society won't have because it has the advantage. Well, that's not extreme enough to convince anybody who really doesn't give an academic shit. And I would look for these theories. And I realize, well, hey, I'm shit out of luck. Because I probably won't find it from Diogenes. With Diogenes, I found that if all states are utopian, as I said, all of them operate on a fantasy structure, what would happen if these states were to be juxtaposed to a an ultimate state, a state that doesn't operate in a specific area by fiat, but by an entire freaking planet through fiat. And this is just 
me rambling at this point. But at that point, things would suck. To be frank, and I already gave the examples why the forced integration on stuff that have already caused wars. We're in war with Libya because of the spread of democracy. We're going to probably eventually involve ourselves with Somalia. I mean, that's a. It's already been a decade and they're still advocating this, so that's how you know that it's still going to be a powerful desire, especially because Somalia is always under wars. We're going to try to liberate them. Try to end the slave system, try to end all these little things, and we're going to get ourselves screwed over. But why would the... Why would a world government advocate these things? These things that usually the United States advocates. Well, they advocate it because, as you know, the United States is the mainstream right now. And although it's not as, my opinion, strong styled as the other ones were. Yeah, they've done shit to earn their place. The United States has shown up late in both wars, but it's proven itself to be a potential with the Cold War. I can deal with that world power. It's proven itself right now. So in it's 70 years, the United States has proven more shit than it has. In 100 years, contrary to what most people would try to say. Think about this. Because the United States is in the mainstream with their strange policies, which try to pretend to be non dogmatic. We all know that if you actually read them with some reason, you'll see that they are pretty dogmatic pretty religious too, but hey, what the hell, and you'll see that if there is a world government, it's probably going to be based on the United States, because the United States is good at selling itself as the best of the utopias, of the states, it has the most in that fantasy structure. And what a world government would try to do is they would try to base itself as the ultimate fantasy structure. That's what the United States is really good at. It's great, really good at the mysticism, like the vocabulary, the vague words. The values that sound pretty on paper, but they aren't. And all in all, if you add all these things up, that it cost them to be the United States. will be the ones everyone's going to be based on. That pisses me off a little, but good thing that <laughs> this is probably not going to happen. This is the plan. When I realized this, I figured, well, that's a good thing, because it proves that there is something that the state has that makes it impossible to do something correct a stateless society can do, and that's polycentric law. And that, which means laws that people would, from all the world, would generally advocate. And the state isn't able to do that. It can only do that for murder, rape, and theft. Everything else is just crazy boundaries. And that ultimately proves that the state tries to emulate what a stateless society can do. It tries to be better, but then it realizes that the state is more limited. It's limited by its own constraints. This is what ultimately helped me achieve my goal in research. As the state progresses, it can only progress.